Ah, oh do, Jim Lad. Go and stand over there. Go and stand and be quiet. Shush. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Chris, not Jim. Arg. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations and to the Great Guitar Build Off Scratch Build Competition. This is my guitar. We have some heavy relief carving, a headstock that I'm pretty sure no one has done before. Oh, and it was all done with hand tools. No electric power tools were used in this build whatsoever. What's this elastic trickery ye be speaking of? Yes, we can be a little bit old fashioned in this workshop, but quite often that means it's easier, safer, quieter, and more accessible. Now, speaking of safer, this guitar is up for auction and it's live now. The link's in the description and all the profits from this guitar will be going to the RNLI to keep the seas a safer place to sail. So at the end of this video, click on that link and put a cheeky bid on. Also, from the 1st to the 5th, the voting for this guitar will be live. And again, I'll put the link in the description. Go and give us a click, will you? I'm down as Chris Hatton. That'd be him. For the voting rather than King Bespoke Creations. But again, I'll try and put a direct link if possible in the description down below. So let me talk you through some of the important parts of this custom bespoke guitar. Well, I started with the neck. And like those old ships, this is an oak neck. So I used my favourite stop cut technique to get the general shape sorted out. Use the chisel to fit the truss rod. And then cut another beautiful piece of oak full of gorgeous medullary rays for the fretboard. Then I decided to carve the neck profile. And this time I thought I'd do something I haven't tried before. This is an asymmetric neck, meaning that the thicker part of the neck is actually towards the bass strings, so it fits into the nook in my hand really nicely. And as we go further up the neck towards the heel, it levels out back towards a kind of D shape. Then I got the carving chisels out and decided to create this figurehead stock. I'll be honest, I think this is my favourite part of the entire guitar. I absolutely love doing this. Uh, totally unique, one of a kind, and what a buxom beauty she is. <laughs> After that, it was the simple task of cutting the fret slots, which again, for the first time, I thought I'd try a multi-scale. We've got 25 and a half inch on the base side, and 24 and three quarter on the treble. Then I filled in these marker dots and created the 12th fret inlay to match up with the whole design of the guitar. And the neck really does feel lovely in my hands. This asymmetric neck profile is certainly something I'll be doing again. It just feels so comfortable. I was really surprised with the multi-scale aspect, just how natural it feels uh, instantly playing chords. I'm not thinking about the fact that the frets are sloped. And with the big advantage of better string tension for the chuggy strings and for the bendy ones, I think we're on a win-win. That, and it looks quite cool as well. Now, speaking of looking a little bit special, well, let's have a look at this body. This is a basswood body. Basswood is regularly used in a lot of factory guitars, usually under a solid coat of paint because it's not generally that attractive on its own. But it is a carver's dream. The grain pattern in here is really constant, very predictable. Yes, you still have to think about grain orientation with the chisels, but it just wants to slice through and behave all the way along. Carving out this ship being destroyed by the Kraken was a lot of fun and the deep relief carving that we've got in here makes it stand out at any angle. The shadows that form on there really display the carving well. Now making the custom bridge and pickup surrounds that combine everything all together. Again using oak for this purpose just to tie in the visual aspect and then into the sound aspects too. Now the suckers that are on here, these middle three that are raised up, 
are the volume, tone and blend pot control. So we have the vol volume control at the top, a blend pot in the middle and then this tone control that's only attached to the neck pickup leaving the bridge wide open all the time on the bottom section. And these custom humbuckers by 4th Avenue Guitars and here's their lady. Again look and sound pretty amazing. And I suppose that would be enough, right? Nah, let's make something a little bit special for the player as well as the audience. So on the back, I got the pyrography kit out. So here we are, we've put this map on the back of here. A lot of people saying, where's the X? It's hidden inside the roll. I'm not giving away my favorite treasures to you. Once we've pyroed all the lines in there, I then decided to stain it and just like we used to at school, I used a tea bag. That was fantastic, I love that. Can't believe that actually worked. Now, I am aware that using the pyrography kit and soldering the wiring as well needed something to be plugged in. You'll just have to forgive me for that one. So if you like what you see, do some clicking. There's loads of links in the description. One for the auction, two for voting from the first, and three would be the entire playlist for this guitar. If you wanna know how we did all of these sections, I explain all the processes that go through in each of those videos. Uh, hopefully you'll find something interesting in there. And while you're in a clicking mood, head to my merch site and grab one of these fantastic t-shirts as well. So until next time, click like, subscribe, sharpen your tools, and I'll see you soon. God bless you now.